construction of a $90 million state-of-the-art police training center protesters call Cop City. The facility will be developed on one of the largest green spaces in Southeast Atlanta. Major corporations are pouring millions into this project, financially pressuring politicians to build Cop City. Surrounding neighborhoods that are more than 75% black say their concerns have been silent. But residents who live nearby say they were blindsided by the city's plan to expand the massive police facility. I'm not sure if they're trying to force us out of the community uh, and just take over the whole community overall, uh, but that's where it looked like the way we, the, the, the path we headed down. Atlanta's proposal to construct the police facility here speaks to the land's painful history. The site was a prison farm until 1995. Prisoners there were subjected to harsh punishments and slave conditions, including poor sanitation, nutrition, and overcrowding. Some critics say claims of unmarked graves have not yet been properly investigated. Before that, the land is thought to have been a plantation that enslaved at least 19 people. It was originally stolen from the Muscogee who lived there until the U.S. government forcefully displaced them to Oklahoma. Today, both activists and tribal members have reclaimed the indigenous name as Willani People's Park. Local advocates have long called for the area to be preserved as a historical site. They just can't wait. They cannot wait. They just want to go in and bulldoze everything and then write the history the way, the way that they want to write it and be done with it. They, they haven't even done proper you know, ecological surveys yet. But Cop City isn't the only facility that the residents have opposed. Around the forest is a Hollywood studio, sanitation center, juvenile prison, and asphalt and trucking factories. So that's key road landfill. Nobody wants to, in, to address the, the environmental injustice of this. Those issues have never been vetted. The facilities have severely polluted Entrenchment Creek, which flows downstream to the South River. In a 2017 report by the city's planning department, the South River Forest was designated one of Atlanta's four major lungs. Now, the city is walking back on its vision to conserve the forest. Uh, to just turn around and have just disrespect the community, because, you know, it's, it's not, they, they never cared about the river. So we, we can accept that. But you're disrespecting the people who live in South Atlanta. And that's what folks who live here ought to be just enraged about. Some neighborhoods around the forest are more than 90% black and are low income with health challenges such as asthma. Getting rid of the green space will also leave them vulnerable to impacts like stormwater flooding. And it's not like you can create a situation to moderate the impacts. You can't. Now keep in mind, during the few times the public did voice their concerns, the overwhelming majority expressed opposition. One hearing in September 2021 lasted for 17 hours, where around 70% of comments were against Cop City. Regardless, City Council passed the plan in a 10 to 4 vote. What is going on with the city? Ordinarily, you would have a city who has control over the police. In this case, the police have a control over the city. So why did council members approve this facility? It's important to understand the police foundation in Atlanta. It's considered one of the most powerful police foundations in the country. For instance, when the mayor was elected, the CEO of the foundation served on his transition committee. Among those sitting on its board are leaders of corporations like UPS, Wells Fargo, Chick-fil-A, Home Depot, and Delta Airlines. The APF raises investments to finance police projects like Cop City. Of the $90 million needed to build the facility, $60 million will be funded by the foundation's corporate donors. The remaining $30 million will likely be paid by taxpayers. Well before the council voted on the facility, the police foundation had been lobbying council members. And the cost? The city leased the land to the foundation for just $10 per year for the next 50 years. City spokesperson told AJ Plus the current facilities for officers is inadequate and that the new campus is necessary to give officers, quote, up-to-date urban training. Uh, we have gangs, etc. We have to be at the very least at that level, if not above it. Less than three weeks after the police killing of George Floyd, an Atlanta officer fatally shot Rayshard Brooks in the parking lot of a Wendy's. His death reverberated nationwide calls to defund the police, eventually resulting in the burning of the restaurant and the resignation of the city's police chief. But the city's response afterward was to increase police funding to improve officers' morale. 
Atlanta is one of the most surveilled cities in the U.S. with extensive technology financed by the Police Foundation. Our neighborhoods are essentially occupied by police. Organizers in majority black neighborhoods have been looking for internal solutions to combat violence such as de-escalation tactics. Community Movement Builders says the most pressing issues affecting residents are actually food insecurity and homelessness. Atlanta is you know, known for being a black mecca. It's known for having a lot of black politicians. But a lot of times those decisions that they make are not in the interests of the black masses here who, that are overwhelmingly poor and working class, but rather in the interests of their funders. The Police Foundation has said it's incorporated public opinion by promising 265 acres as green space and that it will also invest in trails for the public. The Police Foundation says it will move forward with the construction and open by the end of 2023. But families and schools are refusing to let that define the future. collectively agree they're done letting the city sideline their voices.